So we'll start by thinking about space. Not space-time, but just regular space. So suppose Beowulf goes from here to here, say, in a straight line, and we want to know what is that distance. Well, we can figure out the coordinates for both of those points, and then we can use the Pythagorean theorem to figure out the length of the hypotenuse. We'll get a delta x and a delta y, and then we could figure out the, the distance between these two points. But what if Beowulf decides, I don't want to go in a straight line? What if Beowulf does something, maybe moves like this, maybe move, moves in an arc or something like that, where um, at any given time, Beowulf is following a curved path? How would we figure out the length of that path? The Pythagorean theorem applies to straight lines, but Beowulf isn't moving in a straight line. So what are we going to do? Okay, so here's the scenario. Beowulf is moving in a curved path through space. So here are some coordinate axes, x and y, and note that this is space, not space-time. So let's say that Beowulf starts at the origin, and moves to the, um, up to the right and then back to the left. And I'll call the beginning of his journey point A and the end of his journey will be point B. So the distance between A and B is the distance between my fingers right along the y-axis. But Beowulf doesn't take a straight line. He takes this other path. And we want to know what's the length of this path. What's the length of this blue line? And this is where we get stuck. Because, all right, I know how to measure lengths if they're straight lines. Like the length between my fingers. That would be the hypotenuse of a triangle. I could use the Pythagorean theorem to measure distances. But here, we don't have a straight line. But another way of viewing it we actually do have straight lines. So let's say we zoomed into this curve really, really close. So we zoom in more and more, and that's a curved region. But as you get closer and closer, closer and closer, that curve starts to look like a straight line. And if we zoom in more and more, this is right against the camera lens now, it would look straighter and straighter. So. So that's good news. We actually do have straight lines. They're just like microscopic straight lines. So let's analyze those microscopic um, straight lines using the Pythagorean theorem and see what we get. So let's focus in on a little region of this curve. So I'm going to say take this little region here. And let's imagine we zoom way in and see what that looks like. So let's do that over here. So I think then we're going to have something that looks like that. It's going to look like a straight line. And then we could have a little delta x and a little delta y for that little straight line. And I'm going to call um, the length of this little straight line um, delta L, delta capital L. We've been calling it D before, but there's going to be other Ds coming up soon. So we'll call this L for this little straight line. And now this is a straight line, or very close to a straight line. And so I can use the Pythagorean theorem to measure its length. In other words, we can say this, um, delta L squared is delta X squared plus delta Y squared. And I put this approximately equal sign here because, you know, I'm saying this is straight, but there's still probably a little bit of a curve to it. And if this seems objectionable, you could zoom in even more and it would look even straighter. Um, all right, so this process of zooming in more and more, the length of this line and, and the delta x and the delta y are going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. And it's conventional to, um, as things get really small, instead of using a capital delta, to use a lowercase d.
So these um, basically mean the same thing. It's just you can think of d as like a little bit, a little change in l, a little change in x, a little change in y. All right, so that tells us how to measure this little length. What about the entire curve? Well, this entire curve is actually made up of a whole bunch of little straight lines. That's how we're viewing this. And so the total path length, the length of this curve, we would get by adding up all of these little lengths. So, so let me write that. So the total path length, the total length of this blue line, we could get by adding up all of the um, lengths of the straight line steps. So we could do this Pythagoras business for this little piece, and then this little piece, and this little piece, and step along, along, along. So let me introduce some mathematical notation for this, which if you've seen before is maybe familiar, and if you haven't, don't worry, we're gonna sort of, we'll journey through this and end up with a formula, um, some results that, that won't require all of this formalism. So one way to write a sum in mathematics is, let me do it this way, I guess. Um, so you've got some little steps, delta L or DL, and you add them all up. So I is just an index or a label, and this would say add up all of the um, little steps. And then, um, in the limit that these little steps get really, really small, we, we zoom in more and more and more, so these lines are straighter and straighter and straighter, so this is a better and better and better approximation. That quantity is known in calculus as the definite integral. So let me let me write that out. Okay, so in the limit that these steps get really small, we get this thing in mathematics, which is known as a definite integral. The definite integral is a shorthand for this entire procedure of coming up with a sum and letting the steps get smaller and smaller and smaller. This stretched out symbol here is the definite integral symbol, and it's supposed to look like a big S or a big sum, because that's all an integral is. It's a big sum. We're adding up lots and lots and lots of stuff. And from here to here, I just said, well, I could take um, the square root of both sides of this to solve for L, and then I could put that in here. So this tells us how to find the length of a curve. So um, there are a few more things I want to do, and the first thing I'm going to do is a little bit of algebra on this to express this in a slightly different way.